It's my great pleasure to welcome here today with us Brenda Flanagan, writer, professor of creative writing at Davidson College, and also the guest of the, this year's Prague uh, Book World. Brenda will have two readings there today, and she had many events here in Prague. And because we didn't have time to record anything before, we would like to do it today, and we would like to ask Brenda, what is your favorite poem, and would you mind reading it for our viewers, our audiences, because we really want you to stay with us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marketa. Um, it's wonderful to be in Prague again, and it's even more wonderful to be at the book fair with a lot of writers. This year, I'm going to read short stories from my collection in praise of Ireland women and other crimes. And I hope I get an opportunity to read this poem that I composed on the occasion of uh, Barack Obama's ascendancy to the presidency of the United States of America. Because I and my friends had worked very hard to see that he um, got that position. We are very proud of him. And it just seems to me that in the last uh, few years, he has encountered a lot of the problems that I suspected he would encounter when I wrote this poem. There's one thing that you who are listening to this should know. There, there's a reference to Karaganda, and that's because some years ago I went at the invitation of the United States State Department to Kazakhstan. And I went to Karaganda, and the winds were blowing so terribly in, in Karaganda that we actually had to stop. The police stopped us before um, we could get lost. We could not go on the road until we had a convoy of cars with us to take us through. And I see the same thing happening with uh, President um, Obama, that there are moments when he will be stopped when moments when he will not be able to continue to do what he thinks is the best for the United States without a whole convoy. So here's the poem. It's called The Crossing. Dear Barack, you came, you wooed, oh baby, you wowed, and you conquered. But now, as that old dark crooner from New Orleans used to sing, the easy parts over now, the hard part begins. Like the Russian army returning home at the end of the war, your trek will be long and arduous. The winds blowing across the fields of Karaganda will not cease because you are on the road. They will, in fact, howl louder, whooping across your back with a vengeance born of old hates. At the crossroad, your car will be stopped by those who believe they are to protect the road from you, from what lies ahead. They will insist that you move forward only with a convoy, which will and can slow your progress. But eventually, eventually, Barack, the howls will cease, lights will appear, and you will arrive, not necessarily home free, but having braved a crossing that had gripped other men at the ankles. But Barack, there is a coda. When you get there, you must look back. And when you look back, you will see Shirley Chisholm, the first woman black to run for the presidency of this country. Oh, you'll see the Reverend Jesse Jackson and the Reverend Al Sharpton, who ran fast and lost, but cleared the bush. Yes, they did. Kicked away some of those stones, but couldn't turn water into wine. When you look back, Barack, you'll see the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and Claudette Calvin and Rosa Parks. And oh, there'll be Malcolm X smiling in the corner. Oh, you'll see on the sidelines Stokely Carmichael, a.k.a. Kwame Ture. You'll see W.E.B. Du Bois. Ah, 
He who warned us, he warned us that the problem of the 20th century was the issue of the color line. And you know what, Barack? He'll be smiling. Oh, because you broke through that color line. You stepped across that color line. You erased that color line. When you look back, Barack, you'll see Marcus Garvey and Booker T. Washington. They'll be cheering you on. And just off to your right, they'll be Frederick Douglass and Sir Jonah Truth, who had to ask that convention, ain't I a woman too? So that your wife, Michelle, could stand beside you in the White House, showing all the world that she is a woman and first lady to boot. Oh, take a peek over your shoulder, Barack, and you'll see David Walker writing his appeal to the president on behalf of enslaved brothers and sisters. And just alongside of him, you'll see that bearded white face of John Brown. Oh, he who led that uprising against slavery. And yes, Barack, she's in the twilight. But there's Joanne Robinson, who looks a little like your mama. Joanne, who wanted to march in Montgomery against segregation at a time when even Dr. King was afraid. Listen, Barack, and you'll hear the voices of the spirits of Silke and Nat Turner and Toussaint sprinkling grace upon you. And you'll hear that old mother in Langston Hughes' poem telling you, don't you turn back now, son. Don't you slip up, for life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tax in it, but as a climbing on, aiming to reach that mountain top. And when I get there, I ain't gonna stop, cause behind every mountain, there are other mountains, and some valleys too. And oh, Barak, there are rivers to cross. Mighty, mighty, mighty rivers to cross. But you gotta keep on going on, cause we ain't there yet. Ah, oh, Barak, we ain't there yet. You are sitting in that chair, but we ain't there yet. You gotta reach back, Barak and pull some brothers and sisters forward. You gotta cross back over the line and pull some Hispanic and Asian and Caucasian brothers and sisters forward. And not all of them need be from Harvard or Yale because we need help to make it across those raving rivers. And when you get there, Barack, stop a while. Stop a while, and you'll hear Nina Simone singing, To be young, gifted, and black. Oh, she's so glad, Barack. She's so glad that you can fly. And at the crossroad, when you stop a while, you'll hear Mahalia Jackson singing, Amazing Grace. How great it is to have a president like you.